Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and this is my first impressions of Fractal Beyond the Void. Fractal Beyond the Void is a game from Board Game Inc. This is a game currently on Kickstarter. I'll have a link to it in the description down below, and it is a 4X game. As far as why first impression is not a review, it's because I got this copy mid-campaign, so I didn't have time to get in my usual plays that I would try to, to well, to cover, to review a game like this. And this is a game that... I very much feel different, different games fall into different zones of how many plays I feel I need personally before I feel capable of reviewing it. And this is one where I think I need like a minimum of four or five plays, a minimum of four or five plays to really get a feel for everything going on, to get really get a feel for the, the action cards, the objectives, the various factions in play, each faction with an asymmetric ability that could potentially be completely game breaking or changing in the balance or any of those things. And just the general experience. There's a lot going on here, and I have a play and a half under my belt, which is enough to talk about it, but not enough to call this a review. And so as far as those first impressions, I'll still be telling you about the general game, I'll still be talking about my thoughts, feelings, where it can go, all of those things, and starting off with the general overview of the game, this is a 4X experience, like I said already. Expand, explore, exploit, exterminate. This is a game where you are set in space, starting off with your own individual bases. There are different setups available for different player accounts and different game links available. And you'll start off with your base, and like in many of this, this genre, you'll explore outwards, trying to build up your bases, trying to gather more resources, build more troops, explore new technologies, become better, faster, stronger in what you're doing as you take over the galaxy. Now, Fractal plays across four rounds. That's all they are, four rounds called cycles, and then there's going to be a halfway point where you'll score, it reveals some new things, some new technology, some new objective cards, and then repeat the next two cycles and end game. And those four rounds, it may not feel like a lot, but your first round will take you a good 30 to 45 minutes as you figure out the various actions, how to spend your credits towards those actions at play. You have different actions. You can recruit different units on the board. You can advance across the galaxy moving your units. You can put new colonies down on the board, and then finally you can research new technologies. Those are the four primary core actions in the game. A few other ways to take actions, there'll be actions cards over here that you can execute on a number of per game. There'll also be your specific government that will give you an action you can utilize. And that's basically it. You have your credits, you earn your credits during the income phase each round, you spend those credits on your actions to take the actions that you want, your government action will require influence, another currency in the game, and you're utilizing all of those to try to do what you can in that first round to build towards a better and bigger place in the game. And then you'll enter the second round, and you'll start doing much more. Perhaps you've earned more credits because you've leveled up your productive bases. You see, you have four different tracks in the game, Imperial, Productive, Scientific, and Military. Each time you build up one of those tracks, you are placing a colony down the board, and each time you place a colony down the board, you are enhancing that track. You are making it better. So the classic example I'd give is your productive track. Every time you place a productive colony, you'll be earning more credits next round, which effectively means you'll be earning more actions next round. So placing a productive colony earns you more actions which might seem like it's the obvious way to go, but you might be focused on just having a better action instead. If you level up your military track, then when you recruit, you can recruit more units at a time, so maybe that's the way to go instead. Or maybe you want to move faster across the galaxy with your Imperial track, as well as potentially playing more cards and earning influence along the way. Or finally, your science tracks. Your science track will determine how far your ships can go, those new propeller thrusters in your engines or whatever they are, as well as giving you actual science to utilize towards the tech trees. There's different track tech trees, there's military and civic tech, giving you in-game currency benefits, uh, different benefits there, as well as military techs, improving your tactics cards for when it comes time to the, the, the combat rounds. So you're building up your colonies, improving your galaxy as you spread further and faster, trying to get to different regions on the board for different purposes. You'll want to place down specific colonies on specific regions that accept those colonies. You'll want to head to the various productive sectors on the board because those will also earn you even more credits during the round, giving you more actions that you can utilize. You'll want to head towards the center, towards the utopian sector where there'll be a singularity at play, often point something big going on, a little bit of a fight going on at play there. And there's everything on the board is giving you a reason towards going for it. Which brings us to the objective card. The objective card determines how you earn victory points in the game, or at least how you earn the bulk of the victory points in the game. You'll start the game with a single objective card telling you exactly what you get over here. In order to achieve the Imperial track, we have to have three influence. In order to achieve the scientific track, we have to have two combat cards, two military tactic cards. So you have different cards at play, different things you're going for. It's not about simply fighting and winning. Each track gives you a different criteria as to how you earn the points for those tracks. And so you're trying to be mindful of the particular objective in play. They'll always be slightly different. There's eight for the first age, eight for the second age. So you're always playing with a different combination of exactly how those things will combine and trigger and what you're going for. You don't like fighting in this game? That's mostly fine. You might be, you might be attacked by others, but you don't necessarily have to attack others. 
You can sit there and build defensively, trying to go for the other ways of getting points in the game. You can go for any number of different things, any number of different ways you can specialize and power yourself up. You can go for science, trying to become better and stronger at what you do, trying to just build up, sit and turtle a bit on the board while building up your te technology and become better there. Build up your various, explore further into space, uh, dealing with the different obstacles and anomalies and all those things you'll encounter. Every time you explore a new sector, you'll flip over an obstacle card or an anomaly card or perhaps a singularity card, and you'll have options on the board. That's the explore aspect of the game. The galaxy is preset, the galaxy is pre-built, but what you encounter in that galaxy is not clear at all. And so this will give you different options. Over here, if you have a mech on that space, you can trade it in, not trade it in, you can have a mech there and get an influence. Or you can give up an influence to get an infantry unit. So you have different options on the board as you explore those cards. This is a classic 4X game. Expand outwards, fight with others, level up your technologies, take your actions. The way it executes, though, is always going to be the difference between this game, between Eclipse, between Voidfall, which I just ended on Kickstarter, between any of these other 4X games. As far as my initial impressions for this game, I'll start by saying that 4X is a genre that I have always enjoyed, but never yet found that perfect 4X game. They always have extremely long buildups in what they do. And then it's always a bit of a, I enjoy the build-up process, but then the execution always feels a little bit too tense. I don't love having things torn down that I spend time and energy building up, and yet that's inherent to the genre. So 4X as a genre, I'm not yet sold if that's my particular genre. I always enjoy them. I never particularly love them. And if you think that's a precursor to me walking and telling you how bad Fractal is, that's, that's not the case. But Fractal is both very good, while also not necessarily being amazing for me. And so I think the context that 4X games haven't yet ever hit that sweet spot for me is worth noting. Always enjoyed them, have yet to truly love them. And I'll start with the bad here, and I'll move my way up from the bad, the medium, to the good, and I'm specifically going out of order to my usual review format to remind you that this very much is a first impressions. This very much is different than my usual format because it is based on having a play and a half under my belt. And starting with the bad, the absolute worst, my least favorite part of a fractal, and the part that genuinely has me hesitant what I would rate it at if I were rating it today, is the iconography in the game. The iconography is terrible, and the rulebook and player aids don't help. Fractal gives you two player aids full of just, you know, icons on them. You have tons of icons on them just listing you all these things, and if you're like, wow, that's a lot of iconography, that's two sides of the player aid, that's not the iconography. That's not all of it. They gave me player aids that don't have all the iconography in the game. The amount of iconography in the game is completely, I want to say unnecessary, but I'd have to see the equivalent with text. Now, at a game and a half in, it is starting to become much more second nature. It is rarer that I have to look up what a symbol means, but I sometimes still have to look up what a symbol means. Each of the tactic cards will have their own set of iconography, iconography that's not on any of the player aids. You have to pull out the rulebook for that. The artifact cards will come with iconography. The the various uh, the, the action cards will come with iconography. All the singularity cards, the obstacles, everything in the game is chock full of iconography. The amount of different symbols there are, if I have to make a guess, it's probably somewhere in the range of 30 different symbols that you'll have to remember and sometimes they are similar. I mean, looking at the iconography between a, a science tactic, between a civic tactic, and between a military tech, they're completely similar. They're, they, they look identical. A lot of things in the iconography just look way too similar and takes way too much time to, to get it clicked in your system. My first play of Fractal was definitely marred by, by having to frequently reference what something does, what something is, what that particular symbol means. And this is after walking into the game, having read the rulebook twice and knowing that the iconography might be a problem. And so the iconography in Fractal is the biggest barrier not to the game being good, but to my potential enjoyment and experience of it. If there's a way that they can streamline that iconography down to fewer characters, fewer symbols, or alternatively having, even just, I mean, honestly, even giving a player aid that covers every single symbol without me having to reference the rulebook would be a good start forward. The good news is this is a prototype. This is not full, full final production or anything. Rules are subject to change. Rule books are subject to change. Uh, player aids are subject to change. So this is a potentially easy problem to fix. At least putting all the, all the symbols on a player aid is an easy problem to fix potentially changing the symbology entirely to having a more text-based system, that potentially is a lot more work and may not even be the right judgment call, but I can't tell you what it should be. I can tell you how my experience with the iconography has been. It has been a barrier to enjoying the game. Secondly, and I only really have one other thing that was a particular problem, but and this is a problem in most 4X games. It's why I don't particularly love the genre, and yet I only like the genre. I find 4X as a genre has that 
aspect where you're trying to expand outwards and then you frequently have the choice of how far do you push your expansion and at what point are you going to get slapped on the back of your head by another player who just wandered into your home territory because you thought you can get away with a little bit more pushing. And that means 4x as a genre. This is a 4x problem. It's present in Fractal. It has, it's absolutely present in my experience in Fractal, but I think it's been present in nearly every 4x game I've played. I shouldn't say nearly every 4x game. It depends on how, how the movement works in these games and how much it pushes you forward in different directions versus how much you can build up a defensive perimeter that expands slowly outwards. But in Fractal, I found, like in many 4x games, that my choices are either being very conservative with how I spread across the board, the map, the galaxy, whatever it is, and that's fine, but then I limit my expansion in the game, or I can be a little bit more aggressive and try to actually get out there, explore things, do what I need to do, but then that opens myself up to being attacked by other players. I often find that balance is very hard and very punishing if you are the person who is hit, especially in a three-player experience with both, both my plays of Fractal have been. That does mean that I'm walking into the game understanding that we're all kind of pushing outwards, but then one of us will be the first one to be hit in the rear. One of us will be the first one to be attacked, and that person will feel a little more punished by the nature of the Forex genre. Now again, this is not a fractal problem. This is more of a my general issue with the genre that definitely carries over into fractal, but factored in as a more of a 4x complaint than a fractal complaint, but it's worth noting. As far as things that are more middle ground, things that I didn't necessarily have an issue with, but just worth covering, first of all, is faction balance. I, I We've played with, I think, five different characters by now. We've played with five of these seven different characters, and they all have different abilities, and they all have different strong abilities. There are, they, each, each one comes with one or two abilities, and they're very strong in what they do, and they're very game-breaking in how they change how that faction operates. I can't speak for balance amongst those factions. I can't say I've noticed any clear and obvious winner as far as which faction is stronger or how to play to that strength. I can't speak for the balance of uh, at all of those factions. The only one we've played with twice is going to be the Delverar, and yeah, it, it's I can't speak for the balance aspect. I can say that I enjoy the asymmetry. I like the fact that each one comes in a way that they are different. Are they balanced? I have no idea. It takes a lot more place for me to even have an opinion there. As far as the exploratory aspect of the galaxy, Fractal comes in with a 4X board that is all explored, and different 4X games handle this differently, whether you're genuinely exploring something or whether you're encountering something new, and Fractal takes the encountering something new approach. You'll be dealing with these anomalies, singularities, with these obstacles that are all across the galaxy. As you wander into a new territory, you're not discovering what's in that spot. Rather, you are discovering, well, I guess technically you are discovering what's in that spot. You're not revealing a new tile on the board. You are simply finding out what's in that tile. What is the thing you'll have to engage with and encounter? And it doesn't really have a sense of exploration. If you're looking for a sense of exploration, you're not going to find it in Fractal. Not that it bothers me, but it does give you the sense of unknown. So the sense of unknown is definitely present. You'll deal with the card. You'll have some sort of effect that you can or can't pay, which might bring us to luck. You might be a bit concerned with the luck aspect. If I wander into a galaxy tile, into an obstacle tile, that I can pay without having to achieve any other thing. Maybe I walked in with a mech, and that's great, and it needs a mech. Awesome. That's great. But maybe you walk into yours and you don't have what you need. Maybe you walked into yours with a mech, so we did the same thing. But you wandered into the one that needs three spaceships instead. So it, there is definitely a luck aspect of how those cards play out. Hasn't been an issue for me, but that's the general exploratory aspect of Fractal. It, it's fine. I, I'm okay with it. They don't have any pros or cons around it. Now, combat is also a medium for me. Combat relies on a tactic card system. At the beginning of each combat with other players, you're going to draw your combat cards, your tactic cards into your hand, and then you'll play those tactic cards face down, revealing them. They'll have an initiative order as well as how they activate. So the initiative order determines how fast you activate, if it's the same one you activate at the same time, and then what the cards do depends on the units you have in play. Maybe I played a retreat to get out of combat. You might get in a firing shot first, potentially taking out some of my units, but I might walk away with some science as a result of it. Maybe, on the other hand, you play a tactic card that relies on you having you know, two, uh, having a mech on the board, which will then take out one of my units. But maybe I play a card that plays my ships first, and I can take out your mech first. So it has a bit of a... Uh, the cards activate based on the units in play, but you may or may not have those units in play by the time your card activates. It's a bit of a thinking through, well, you have those units, so you're more likely to play that card, and then I'm more likely to play that card. It's a system that feels similar to Kemet, and yet for myself, I find it not as rewarding. I don't have a firm answer why. Again, I didn't have a problem with it. I'd say it's a strong medium. The combat system works. I've played with better. I've played with worse. I've enjoyed the general nature of the combat in Fractal, while not necessarily having a pros or cons around the tactic cards themselves. They do the job. They don't feel particularly amazing. They don't feel particularly problematic. They do remove any form of general luck from the game, past the luck of, did you read your opponent correctly or not? 
Now, as far as things I did like about Fractal, as far as the experiences that I particularly enjoyed, to begin with, it is a quick and punchy 4X. Fractal sells itself as a faster 4X experience. And I will say that it will take potentially multiple plays to get there, but I think that half hour per player is on the money. I think our first full game came in at a little over a little under two hours for three players. And so I think this will hit that half hour per player spot once the players are familiar with the game, once they aren't checking the rule sheet for the icons, once they aren't double checking exactly how a sequence plays out or what you can do. Once you have a handle on the rules, on the iconography, how the game plays out, I think that half hour per player is 100% achievable if you pick the short map. It's worth noting, I have not played with any of the long maps yet. There's different map setups, short and long, and so the long ones, I can't speak for how they go, but I imagine if you want a longer game, play on a bigger map. Although, perhaps not. It may not change the actual length of the game. At the end of the day, you're still playing in a galaxy where you have the same number of actions coming each round that will be dependent on your board and how you lay that out, although potentially there's more productive sectors which could give you more of a currency. So, again, I can't speak to the experience of a longer map or the bigger map. I can tell you that the shorter map, the half hour per player, does seem right, which makes Fractal an accessible 4x game, making it more likely to hit the table with my group. And the action system is tight. I love these four different tracks. In general, I love systems that reward you for building things out. So I love that aspect of putting a colony down on the board, and in some way my system has improved. Am I, either I'm playing more cars, I'm moving more ships, I'm moving ships faster, I'm generating more science, I'm generating more credits, which means more actions every round, or I'm building up my military faster. Each one of those tracks has their own compelling reason to dive into them, and each one, as you level them up, will give you more and more things, more and more ways to benefit in the game. I like that system. I like the way you pay for the actions themselves. You get a few credits every round, but there's also a depletion system where you can kind of push your luck a little further by depleting your actions, but you'll have to take care of those depletions or you won't be able to use your actions until you can. And I appreciate that push your luck nature. Sometimes you might actually find yourself needing that extra action and just going for it, knowing full well you will not be able to recruit at all next round, which could be incredibly punishing, but it might have been what you needed to get you through this round. And I like that system. I like the depletion system. I like the general credit system. I like your government actions and I like the cars at play. The fact that there are all these cars and they're so tempting, but if you take your second card or your third card once you level up to your maximum imperial, then you're ending your round. And so you have to be mindful of that as you go through it. That card might be really tempting, but it might also mean giving up a credit or saving a credit for next round. Maybe that's worth it to get the right card at the right time in the right way. So I like the action system in the game. I like the objective system. I talked about this briefly already, but you'll have an objective system at play where you're going for different objectives and those objectives are not inherently combat. I believe Fractal is a game where you'll play through it and you'll engage in combat. But how much you engage in combat is definitely up to you. And then once you've gone through the first age, you'll reveal a second age tile, which you don't necessarily know what it is until you get there. You'll deal with whatever event is there, which potentially will add different ways of scoring points. And then you'll line this up with this track, making it even harder to get those victory points. But now you're getting more victory points when you complete those. So it has a sense of escalation, but a sense of unknown escalation as you go through the game. And I appreciate the objective system, the variable nature of it, and the fact that it does not in inherently incentivize combat. Combat is but one of five different things to be mindful of the game. And the general tableau building, which we talked about briefly, but the fact that you're building out as you go, you're building out your actions, you're, you're, you're building up, putting up more colonies on the board, giving you a better system, giving you more to do. You're potentially exploring different event cards or obstacle cards that some of them which may stay on the board. You'll have this singularity, which I haven't even looked at this one over here. You'll have the singularity that will deal with this, the domain of death. You'll be dealing with all these different options over here as you go through the game, exploring out the galaxy. You'll have these various, uh, I can't remember what they're called, the, the living galaxy tokens that will give you more things to be mindful of. The galaxy explores and develops in both in yourself. And then, of course, the tech cards. I haven't even talked about the tech cards. The tech cards, which give you two different techs per age, per whatever. So you have five different civic techs in the first age, five different civic techs in the second age, and each one has two copies. But you can earn both copies, and I do like that. And then there's one particular character who is brutal, who whenever they explored a tech, they got rid of the other one, basically depleting the galaxy of any degree of science and exploration, which was a lot of fun to have to engage in the world that way. So overall, those things, I really appreciate the upgrade and the tech system. So overall, those are my, my first impressions based on a play and a half of Fractal. Those are my first thoughts of the game. Oh, the artifacts. We haven't talked about the artifacts, but exploring these artifacts can be a lot of fun, although they can be variable as well in terms of what they give you, what they do for you. But you'll have different encounters that will give you different options to gather those artifacts, and it's one more sense of upgrades or benefits or bonuses that are fun to experience. Overall, Fractal has been a fun experience so far, but it's one where I'm not sure where it lies. In terms of my rating system, which I'm not going to rate it, but I'll give the rating range for Fractal for me. My rating system is a 1 to 5 scale. You can check it down below. Fractal is likely going to be between a 3 and a 4, depending on where it settles. 
my first play of Fractal was a lot more work and a lot less fun as I went through it. My second play of Fractal was definitely improved, but I think I need to play it more to see where it settles as a game. I've enjoyed my experience with the Fractal. I'm happy to dive back into it, but I still don't have a firm feeling of whether where exactly it lies in my collection, where exactly it lies as far as my enjoyment of the of the fork genre in general. I like the tech system. I like the action system. I like the tableau system. And yet at the same time, one thing that's worth noting is I don't often have these amazing moments in the game. I find games are made up of a lot of moments where you're like, look what I just lit, look at the combination, and Fractal will give you that sometimes. Sometimes you'll deplete an action that you needed or whatever, you'll get that extra push in the galaxy, you'll grab that last action card, you'll have some combinations of effects that will occasionally make you feel like you did something clever. But most of the time, it's more about the sequencing. It's more about going through the motions. I'll take my action, I'll build up my galaxy, I'll move over here, maybe we'll have a combat. Combat doesn't feel that rewarding to me. Combat feels okay, it feels like a necessary step. If I played a game, an entire game of Fractal without a combat, I'd be fine with it. I enjoy the general building out a lot more. I don't find the combat to be my favorite part of the game. Overall, I've enjoyed Fractal. Uh, Fractal Beyond the Void, overall, I've enjoyed this one. I'm happy to dive back into it, but I really need to have more plays under my belt to see where it lies. And really, my biggest complaint and critique is that iconography issue. I want the accessibility of this game to be a lot, well, more accessible, but we'll see how that goes. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope this was helpful, and as always, have a good one.